welcome back to Palm. Oh, no, wait, this is Computers for the Completely Clueless. <laughs> Almost got the name of the show wrong. <laughs> hey, I'm clueless about that, too. We're talking about drawing programs today. Yes. And we've been using Open Office uh, Draw. Yes, pretty we're nice, learning, huh? We're learning it along we with are our folks learning out there. it right along with you and uh, figuring out some of the new things that are um, in this uh, software application. Mm -hmm. Really pretty nice. Mm -hmm. um, and again, we love the price because it's free. Yes. So we're going to continue on and, and take a look at um, some of the other things that you can do. By the way, now, did we talk about where you'd even get this? Uh, OpenOffice.org. You know, we've okay. covered that in some of our previous shows. So Sorry, it, I wasn't paying attention. It is. Oh, no, it's okay. But you do have to have an Internet connection. Okay. And you, and you do download it. It's very, very easy. It's, I mean, the, the website is, is just makes it really easy to download right. now, and that's it. So um, what we're working on now, we've been just working on this little composition here. Um, and we want to go um, down around, uh, as we kind of wrap things up, we're going to go down the toolbar here on the bottom because there's some really cool tools down here. For instance, you were talking about um, having to just do things with arrows, or maybe you want to create an arrow that you can copy and paste into another application. You can do that with just this little tool here. Uh, maybe I want to point out to somebody that there's a, you know, there's something up there. Now, it doesn't look like much now, but if I, um, if I bring up the properties for this arrow by double-clicking on it, that may be hard to do. Right there. Yeah. Okay. If I bring up the properties for this arrow, then I can, I can make changes to it. And, and look how it kind of stretches out. Mm -hmm. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move this endpoint so you can see it actually is an arrow. Okay, so if I, you know, you can make changes to these things. Very simple. Um, and I'll just get rid of that one as soon as I can select it. All right, so that's a little share. We've seen, like, circle, and, and but there's also a text tool. We've seen that. You can also draw freeform curves. Oh, nice. So if you want to draw, like, a wavy line mm -hmm. like that, and, of course, you can use those in combination with other objects. And then you, once you draw it, you can move it around. Right. And if you hold your mouse down on the little arrow to the, to the right of the tool, you'll see that there are other options available here. So, for instance, you have a subtractive tool. Okay? Subtractive? Well, a tool that would take things away as you paint. Oh. Um, and all sorts of other things that you can do. So you can create all sorts of crazy lines here. Now, this one is uh, really good if you were going to be doing some kind of flow charting or you wanted to connect something. Mm -hmm. um, you have a bunch of different connector lines here. I think I'm actually going to start a new file here. So you can kind of make your own graphic bit. organizer. Right. So and right next to that, you actually have all these flow chart symbols. So let's say you wanted to do some flow charting, and these are standard symbols when mm -hmm. you kind of explain that how something is processed. Um, you can just drag these out and just insert them right from the page, as I say on here. All right. And then you can use the connector lines down at the bottom. And let's say I want to use this one. And that's going to give me some little connector points, and I can just drag it down. Now, if I add some more objects here, okay, these things become smart objects, I'm guessing. <laughs> All right, and if I move this point, I can snap it right oh, to. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it'll snap right to. So if I move this around, check it out. Okay, Very nice. it stays anchored where it's supposed to be. So it's a good way to show connections between ideas. Right, exactly. So you could use it for, um, what do we call that thing in school? Graphic, oh, mind graphic mapping. Organizers. Graphic organizers, yeah, organizers. mind mapping. You can do that all right you here. You can do timelines. Mm -hmm. And you've got a bunch of little uh, extra shapes that you can insert. Uh, we did the smiley face before, but you've also got, you can do puzzle pieces. Oh. And, uh, and again, these are just I all like very easy to do. Well, you want to change the color, just change the color. So all of these are available down here. And then oh, and I like how the puzzle pieces, you can see how it, making multiple ones, they would fit into each other. I like that. Yeah. So they're just pieces that you could put together. That's the so elementary again, teacher in yeah, there. Oh, elementary alert. <laughs> all right. So again, all these sorts of shapes that we can do. We've seen stars. Mm -hmm. All very easy. There's, um, there are uh, the abilities to bring in other galleries. Um, you can do uh, just like in Word. Yeah. You have Word, Word art. art. It's Word so art. here it's called font work. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I bring that in. And so sometimes it's just a matter of getting to know the different terminology, but it, I, it looks it, like it, most it of it is, is, uh, is the same. So it's pretty much the same, and I can just come in here and take so that. So can I print this, and uh, what else can I do with it? I mean, Well, it, this is obviously something you want to you know, print out and put on your refrigerator or somewhere. I mean, this is great <laughs> art. frame, for, right. Well, I'm, and I'm glad you bring that up, because we want to talk a little bit about file formats. Now, mm -hmm. we did file save on our document earlier. Okay. Uh, so we know we have it saved, but most drawing programs have their own um, their own format that they use. Okay. So 
uh, if you're working in Photoshop, for instance, it's mm -hmm. called a PSD. You don't really use that. I mean, this is your working file, okay. right? Okay. So when we save right. a document in OpenOffice, with, with a drawing document, it's the same thing. So I click Save, and we're just going to save that. And you notice the, the file type is ODG. Okay, so okay. that's while you're working on it. That's while I'm working on it. You can go right. back and mm -hmm. modify it mm -hmm. if it's in that format. Exactly. So I can go back and I can make changes using all the tools in the software. Now, when I'm all done, mm -hmm. then I can export it. Okay. And there are lots of different export options. So if I go to so file, that's a little tricky. Save it is. And export. It is. And, and the main thing, the main reason you have to export is because different programs use graphics with different formats. Okay. So if it's a web page, for instance, you want to use a GIF. Or JPG format. Okay, but for the average user. For the average the user, user. Yeah, let's say you want to put something. How would I want to save this? Well, if you I want don't to really put, understand what all these extensions The mean. default is this one right here, Portable Network Graphic, and that works almost for everything. Okay, so okay? That's, that's pretty good for most That's everybody. a good one. Now, if you want a little higher resolution, you could go to a different format like a, um, like a TIFF. And they have different purposes and different ways they compress information. Mm -hmm. But for most people, PI, PNG, PNG. Is going to work out just fine for them. Okay. And, and just an export out. Now I can use that and I can insert it in my Word document or PowerPoint, wherever I want to go. Mm -hmm. All right, so that was just a quick look at uh, Microsoft, um, I'm sorry, not Microsoft, but <laughs> OpenOffice.org and their draw program. And Lee, we've got, got a great question from Michael in Boca Raton. Michael in Boca Raton. Michael, what, and, did he, and, what did he say? Well, he says a lot of things, uh, um, Lee, but, but what this question is about mm -hmm. is why can't I find my programs? when I want quick access to them, all right? He says he's mm -hmm. tired of having to click on start, and then the name of the folder, and then the name of the application, so okay. like four or five so he, clicks. So he's probably using a program frequently, right? and exactly. uh, is, is having trouble finding right. it, he maybe wants, it's in a folder. Right, he okay. wants quick access to the same program over and over again. What's the best way, do you think, that, that, that somebody could do that? Uh, typically what I do is I will pin something to my start menu. Pin it? Yes, I would pin now, it. What does so, that mean? Uh, what it means is you go to your start menu, okay. and uh, you uh, go to the actual program in the start menu. Right. All right. And uh, let's go ahead and show that. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. So here we are in start, and let's say... Okay. So go to all programs. All right. So it's not listed here on the left. Correct. And that do... is your start menu, but see, okay. it's not there. We want to go So let's say we there. wanted to put open office, uh, this drawing program we've been using. Okay. Well, you know what? It's already there. Let's go okay. to something else. All let's right. go to uh, Google Earth. Okay. Okay. And let's choose Google Earth. Now right click there. Okay. And you see just four down, it's pinned to start menu. Go ahead and choose that. And you see up at the top left, oh, wow. it's right there. So now hit start it. again. Right, right, right. It will always be so there for you. Always. Now if I wanted to remove it, I bet I right click on it again, wouldn't I? I think you did. There it is. Unpinned, Unpinned from, from start, start menu. menu. So yeah. that's really easy if you know you're going right. to use that program all the time. And Correct. Michael, that's a great way to do it. I think if you're gonna, mm -hmm. uh, if you have an application, you need to get to all the time. Correct. Other things we've talked about before include creating shortcuts on the desktop. Yes. yes. Um, and there are other ways to do it, but but that's a great tip, Lee, and I'm, I'm glad you brought that to us this week. Yeah. All right, we've had a great time here at Lee Colbert. I hope you come back yes, again soon. I'd love to. Uh, we'll have to just uh, maybe uh, kneecap Lee Keller so that happens more often. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, Lee. No, Lee. We, we want you to get better. Anything. Get better, Lee, and come back soon. And you come back soon, too, and join us here on Computers for the Completely Clueless. Yes. Bye. Bye.